Is that better now? Yes. <laughs> Sorry, I did I've got a monitor control now, yeah. 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 I must attack it, I must attack it without realizing the problem. I'm only controlled, then I'll make a problem. I'm just watching these all birds out there. Oh, that's not good. Oh, right. Oh, that's not good. 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 Oh, that
Lord, that you said to me, well, I've done too much, but Lord, there's never too much. As long as, Lord, that you're faithful and we can come to you and ask for forgiveness, Lord, and start a new life, Lord, and walk in the spirit, not the flesh. So, Lord, I thank you for everything, Lord. I thank you for this fellowship. We can come together and we can serve your name, Lord, and we're so grateful because there's people around the world who can't even have this, Lord, and sometimes we don't realise that, but, Lord, I thank you for everything you've done and for dying on the cross, Lord, that if it wasn't for that, Lord, we'd all be lost souls right there. So thank you, Jesus, for this, Lord, in your holy name. Amen. 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 in 
block the door. Amen. I am doing the work all over the world, and the devil cannot do a thing Amen. about it. Amen. Devil, get under our feet. Amen. Get behind us, Satan, because Amen. you're moving in Norway, you're moving in Blackpool. Jesus is getting all the glory. Amen. Jesus is all about yes. him. Amen. He's doing a wonderful work in here. Amen. Just to encourage you, just to keep going for the Lord, keep seeking opportunities. Say, Lord, use these hands for your glory today. Use me for your glory. Damn it, wonderful, you're a blessing. Amen. You know, you've just got to fire about and keep going for the Lord. Amen. Keep seeking Him. Amen. Keep going after Him. Because every time you say, Lord, use me, He's going to use you. He will use you. That person in black boy said there was a divine opportunity. It was a divine appointment. Yeah. I set up the motorway, didn't I? Forgot your speed. I left my speed <laughs> behind. The Lord was saying, right, David, are you going to continue on now without your speaker? Are you going to hide behind your speaker? Are you going to continue on? I was in car and he was like, I can't believe I'm not my speaker. <laughs> and the Lord said, do what you were doing before you speak up. Just give traction. Amen. Then Amen. the opportunity. So be faithful in the small things. Amen. He will mm. trust God. He's doing it here with the starship. Hallelujah. So we didn't give in when we could give in. When we wanted to give in. When you thought, where's the one going all the way from Charlotte? Yeah. That was a bit far. Amen. Amen. Keep on mm. keeping on with yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Keep going. Mm. Because much is not about us now to start the loss and we're already in the family of God. We're already born again. Amen. We're already saved. Heaven be joyous when we got born again. It's about the loss. Yeah. Let's keep going on for Jesus. Right. Amen, Amen, brother. Amen. Preach it. Right. right. I'm on the second part of this uh, wonderful epistle. Hallelujah. Wonderful Amen. epistle. This is, the title of this is a, it's a, one of the prison epistles. This was one of the epistles that Paul written when he was locked up for two years under house arrest. And this is one of his epistles. Does anybody else know the epistles that Paul written while he was locked up for two years? Ephesians, Colossians, Philemon and Philippines are the, are the gospels, so the epistles that was written while he was under house arrest. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. And them epistles today, 2,000 years on, have been there to bless us mm -hmm. and to privilege us and give us a hunger and a thirst yeah. and knowing who Jesus is. Mm -hmm. We don't need to go anywhere else to know who Jesus is. Mm -hmm. We don't need to pick books up. This is the book. This is the letter that the Holy Spirit inspired. Give to Paul while he was locked up. He wasn't locked up. He was the most pleased man ever, Paul. He was the most pleased man ever, Paul, Amen. because his faith in Jesus. Those who were bound and not those who were under the house of Paul was free. Remember the Philippian and the jailer? They were free. And the chains and the shackles came off. Because Jesus, when you're in him, you're free. We're free. Jesus has set us free. And these epistles are wonderful. So I'm in the, I'm in the book of Philippians. Like I said, Paul wrote this epistle while he's in under house arrest. This was the second time on his second journey. He was arrested three times. He was arrested for the terrible, terrible crime. What was his terrible crime? What was Paul's crime? Preaching the gospel. Preaching the gospel. Mm. That is a crime. Lord, send us. You know, going back to send you to prison. They might send us to prison, there'll be, enough, there'll be a reason why. There'll be a reason why. They might have been because he's not paying his car tax, council tax. But they might send us because he has got a reason to oh, send yeah. us. Like yeah. Paul, he went in there and he has touched, through the Holy Spirit, he has touched millions of people since then because he was obedient to the Lord and kept going. He kept going, he did not give in, he did not shrink back, no. he continued on and he touched all them jailers around him, all them centurion guards, 
who were coming by every day and were probably mocking him and laughing at him, looking at Paul, what's up, where he can't go anywhere, and all Paul would have been doing was telling him, I'm coming to you with nothing else other than Christ and him crucified. I'm coming telling you that Jesus Christ died on the cross of your sins, and that's what Paul would have been doing all day, and everybody would have been mocking him, and people in your workplace mocked him, and all you know, Jesus loves you. Jesus died for you. When you get an opportunity to share it, share it because you don't know the Holy Spirit will do the work. When people are knocking you in the work, continue on, continue on, continue sharing Jesus. Even you might be in the marketplace, you might be in a shop, give a gospel track out, you can start a conversation, the name of Jesus will be heard. And then the Holy Spirit does the work. When we're in bed at night, claim Holy Spirit. Have your way with them on their best tonight. When we're away from the crowd, when we're away from the friends, even in the jail cell, we went to uh, the prison the other week. The name of Jesus being lifted up and glorified in worship. There might have only been four or five people in there, but the Holy Spirit will take that music and it will put it in the jail cells all over the prison. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit's not confined to this little room. That's fine. It's not confined to the box. We are the ones who try to put the Holy Spirit in God in the box. Amen. The churches are the ones who put the Holy Spirit in the box. Amen. We've set programs and set time. We've got to be out to here at five o'clock because we've got tea put it and the snooker's on. We've got to get out of here. Holy Spirit Amen. said, Well, the Spirit of the Lord is just freedom, there's liberty. Amen. I've not put my mind on power, but it's by the Spirit, says the Lord. It will not be turned void. The Spirit of God will not return void. Whatever you speak in Southport, Wigan, on the bus, it will not return void. All we need to do is rejoice. We've been obedient to what God has called us to do. And it's the Holy Spirit which is going to work on the hearts of all the people, Amen. even the ones. And the heartbeat of Jesus, I've said it before, is souls. The heartbeat of Jesus is salvation. Mm-hmm. The last message in the book of Mark 16, 15 was what they say. Go! Mm-hmm. Preach the gospel. Mm-hmm. Go! Don't think about it. Don't get your, don't get your white shot hold and plan. Just go. Mm-hmm. Just go. Just go into your home place. Highways and the byways. Mm-hmm. Seek and to save those which are lost. Mm-hmm. We're all like sheep who've gone astray. We're back with us, shepherd. We're back with the loving care of our shepherd. Isn't it wonderful? If you're happy, just say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right, let's get on with it. Hallelujah. Thanks, Lorraine, for the glasses. I'm actually, I'm not going to say I'm blind as a bad because I've just gone against what I've just spoken about. But, uh, <laughs> right. Chapter 2. Wonderful book. Hallelujah. Oh, wonderful book. If there be any consolation in Christ, if any comfort or love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercy, Fulfill you my joy, that you be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Paul said, let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in loneliness of mind. Let each other esteem others better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which also is in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, he became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. And Holy Spirit, we just want to 
give you this word. Thank you that you've put this word on the heart, Lord. I just ask Holy Spirit that you will minister, not just to those who hear it, but to me as well. And Father, thank you that you're a good and wonderful God. You're full of rich mercy. Your mercy, it says in Scripture, endures forever. In Jesus' name. If there be any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit in our bowels and mercy, fulfil your joy that you be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and one mind. If there be any consolation, this if is a compulsion if, it's not a maybe, it's if, do it, go. It says if there be any consolation. Consolation, another word for it is comfort. Mm. Comfort. If there's any comfort of love, any fellowship of the Spirit, if my bowels are mercy, God is a merciful God. Jesus is full of mercy. Mm. Paul was telling the church at Philippi, he is a merciful God. Mm. He is a God of love mm. who has brought me to tell you this message who brought this word to you to continue on believers in love continue working together for the gospel continue having mercy upon those who need mercy we need mercy every single day church we know that jesus is a merciful loving god it says in scripture god delights in mercy his mercies are new every day. God is a God of mercy, not just to us here, but he loves the lost, like that young lad yesterday. God loves him. He died on the cross for him. The same mercy that Jesus poured out on the cross for us is the same mercy the love that he poured out for that lad in, in, in Blackpool. God is a God who loves and is a merciful, loving God, if there, be, if there be any consolation, any comfort to you right now, I'm in prison writing this message to you about if there's any consolation, any comfort in love. I could, Paul could have been miserable. Paul could have been going on Facebook, you'll never believe what. I'm locked away for two years. Where's God when you need him? Everything was going swimmingly when I got born again. And now look at me. If God is real, where is it? This letter is a letter of joy. Yeah. It's a letter of joy to the church. It was in the encouraging the body of Christ is the pastor to them people of Philippi. And he's telling them, carry on. If there's any mercy, battles and love continue. Fulfill my joy. Paul, full, saying fulfill my joy. Two years locked up when he wanted to be on the streets of Blackpool and Wigan. Amen. When he wanted to be out. Fulfill, I'm happy. I'm full of joy. Amen. I'm full of joy locked up for two years of mouse arrest. And I'm telling the church of Philippi, continue. Continue on church. Fulfill my joy that you be like minded, having the same love that I'm having right now, being of one accord, yes. not two, three separate people. We've got to be one in Christ as a body. Amen. We've got to come together and love Him together, individually, collectively. No bickering or backstabbing. No, I'm better than you, and this is better than you, and I'm better than you. No. Come together in one accord, Amen. one accord, Amen. and one mind. And this, we've got to have the mind of Christ, as the scripture said. We've got to have the mind of Christ, Jesus, wherever we go. We've got to be loving like Jesus. We've got to be thinking like him. Lord, help me to see the lost through your eyes. Let me see those drug addicts and the prostitutes and those who are in prison and those, Lord, who are. You know, the, the pregnant mothers. Let me see them as you see them, Lord. Let me have the heart of compassion 
them as you have for me. It's so easy, and we're all guilty of it. We think, oh Lord, I'm not going. I'm not going speaking to them all the stuff. They're going to ask me for me the fiver. Mm. Send somebody else. Oh, send somebody. Send them. No. Let's continue to have the mind of Christ. Lord Jesus, you died on the cross for them all, bro. You died for me. Mm. I was like in drugs. Whatever, whatever. Mm. You sent your son to die for me. Mm. Jesus shed his precious blood for me. Help me, Lord, to fulfill your joy, the joy of Paul when he walked up. Let me continue on. We like minded, having the same love, being of one accord. One accord. Not separate, but one accord with Christ. Yes. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. Let each other esteem others better than himself. The scripture on strife, keeping away from strife is an honour for a man, but any fool will quarrel. Keeping away from strife is an honour for man, but any fool will quarrel. I know what I was like before I got saved. And you can be around people. And all they want to do, they have the spirit about them. But they want to cause trouble and mischief. And you know the kiss of Judas, what happened with Jesus with Judas? There are people in your life that will come to you. And all they want to do is bicker. And they always want to do is cause somebody. And cause a reaction and cause strife. The worst thing in a body together is when somebody comes in or some people come in and cause strife it will be the end of a fellowship it will disband the fellowship a prayer meeting you know it says in scripture about not despising the holy spirit the easiest way to despise the holy spirit is when strife comes in to the body of believers when strife keeping away from strife is an honor for a man but any fool will quarrel. Let's keep our eyes on Jesus. When people come in and we don't know where, you know, they, they believe in this and that, love them, come in. Let's pray. Let's pray the Spirit of God over the Word of God. Let the Holy Spirit do the changing. Let the Holy Spirit do the work. Let the Holy Spirit do the convicting on the beds. Because that is what the Holy Spirit has been sent to do. He said it's been sent to judgment and righteousness, sin and judgment. That's the job of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's the one that does the changing in us. Have you noticed when you used to go, I have one eye, I tell you what, you know, just pack smoke in here. Who are you talking to me about? Will you do this? Will you, you're a great lad, you're a great lad, you honestly are, but will you do me a favour? Will you just like, will you just like say, are you, you see me? <laughs> Pray, <laughs> Lord, change them. Lord, change me first. Because it might be me. Uh -huh. It might be me. You, you know, we go to work, colleagues at work. There might, be, there might be like a bit of like animosity or something. They might pick the Bible off me. That I've got the problem. Holy Spirit, if it's me, show me. You do the work in me. Don't put any hindrances in my way. Because they need Jesus. And now we need him every day. We need to walk with him every day. Talk with him every day. Remember, it's an ongoing process. It's an ongoing sanctification process. We're saved by the blood. We're heaven bound. But it doesn't just stop there. That sanctification process of the Holy Spirit is daily, daily, daily walk with Jesus. Every day. Lord Jesus do your work in me. And this is what Paul is trying to encourage the body. Let nothing, church, be done through strife or vain glory. Let, he said, let, let each other esteem each other better than themselves. Vain glory. What is vain glory? Selfish ambition. There is nothing wrong with ambition. 
The devil will come in and say, you can't be ambitious in the world. Oh, you've got to be poor. You've got to have nothing. You've got to have nothing. You've got to have the Mother Teresa spirit. No, there's nothing wrong with ambition. There's nothing wrong with having money. There's nothing wrong with finances. We need to get past that issue in the churches today where it, finances is the taboo subject. You mentioned finances and everybody all gets riled up. We want to go on missions but with no cash. Good on you, brother. You're suffering for the Lord. <laughs> you ain't going to be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't you like me? He's got to get the GM boss. He's not got anything <laughs> clean to get there. So when you pray, Lord, help me. You feel me finance and somebody comes along and blesses you for finance. What do you do? I rebuke you for giving me that to you. I rebuke you. Get behind me. You've got a tenner in your pocket. You're supposed to be poor. Do we pray that prayer? We go, thank you, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Lord, that you sent somebody Amen. to bless me. And I know that that person's blessed me. They want to receive a blessing Amen. as well. Amen. Amen. Lord, I've got shoes. Well, can we walk in as you are, Dave? <laughs> what does he say about He knows everything we need before we've even asked him. What does he say? Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And his righteousness, Amen. not our righteousness, not the righteousness of the pastor or the prosperity teacher or the bank manager, his righteousness. And he says, all things shall be added. Amen. Amen. DSSing women can't do to us what God can do Amen. in the moment. Oh, I said, we can DSS, listen, try to put it here, I'm hoping that's still coming. <laughs> The Lord says, seek first the kingdom of God and all righteousness. Ask me. Seek me. He said, those that seek me early will find me. Seek him. Seek him, Lord Jesus, I've got a need. And what does he do? In his time, he'll show you that God is in control. He's the, he's the owner of a cattle on a thousand oh, hills. Yeah. He owns everything. Amen. When you're driving up to Cumbria and yeah. Carlisle and you see the cows in the field <laughs> and you see the sheep going, nah, <laughs> and you see all the animals, he is the owner of a cattle in a thousand oh, hills. Yeah. When anybody asks you what does your father do, just say he's a landowner. Yeah. Our father is a landowner. He owns everything. Everything. We've got no worries. We just put to him. Father, I come to you in Jesus' mighty name. He says, Dave, I know what you need before you even ask. He wants us to ask. He wants us to go to him like a little child. He wants us to get on the edge of our bed and go, Lord, I'm not going to talk day today. I know you have to talk today. I'm here with you. Remember that book there, full of promises, from Genesis to Revelation. It's for you. Read it, pick it up, and claim them. Get all that word, and take hold of them, and hold on to it. Hold on to that book. Not your, your, your theological books, or whatever books. They're okay for getting gleams of, 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 of bits out, but that is the book of all books. That's the only book we need on our bookshelf. Yeah, it's man. this book. Yeah, it's the only book we as believers need. Yeah, it's all in yeah, here. Man. If somebody comes to you and says, Can I preach out to this Spurgeon book on the John Calvin? Get the shredder machine and shove it in the shredder. <laughs> there's, no, there's no greater enemy to Christian love than pride yes. amongst the body. Vain glory, selfish ambition, putting your needs over the needs of a brother and sister, trampling over somebody to get to the top. And I, I'm the great evangelist, and somebody <laughs> comes along, never been out on the street or whatever, but I'll go, leave him behind, I'll go, I'm the great evangelist. <laughs> you know, send me, I'm going to receive one car, he can walk on the bus. Doing it because we want vain glory. 
all the selfish ambition all selfish ambition people come to church and tithe the money tithe the money regular because they want position within a church that's right when the money dries up what role within the church do they get when the money dries up selfish ambition doing things with the wrong motives god will not be mocked we've got to do things with him through the heart so there's no greater enemy to Christian love than pride amongst the body, pride in our work life, pride in ministry, church, wanting to get ahead of somebody else by doing it wrong or doing mischievous ways to get to the top. It goes on all in business. It goes on all in business. Don't be like the world. If you're in business in work, you see your, your friends cutting corners, don't cut corners, do it his way. He will bless you. He will exalt you. It's so easy within sales. I've done it for years. Somebody comes to you and says, Dave, if you do this, cut that deal out, cut that person out, you'll get, you'll hit your target, you'll do this. No, I'm going to go there, Lord. I don't want selfish ambition. I don't want to do vain glory. I want you to exalt me, Lord, in your season and your time. Because at the end of the day, there are people I work with who don't know you, Lord. I want to be a testimony of what the Holy Spirit is doing in me at this workplace. If somebody comes and says, does this, no, I can't do that in Jesus' name because I'm a follower of Christ and I want to do it his way and not my way. Loneliness of mind, as believers, must esteem others better than above ourselves. We must put each other of ourselves. That's what Paul was saying. We've got to have the mind of Christ. Remember what Jesus did. What was the mind of him? How did Jesus, what would you, he went to the cross. He laid his life down completely for us. And what Paul's saying is we have to have the mind of Christ. He said, let this mind be in you. That was in Christ Jesus. He's not just give us a right in there, off you go. He gave us a teaching, an application, and he's given us how we do it, how we achieve it. Point us all the way back to Jesus. He points us all the way back. Paul, such a blessing from the Holy Spirit, the Christology of Paul here in these letters. This is where it's at in here. This is the Christian living in here. This is it. This is where it is. It's wonderful, isn't it? It says, let us be esteemed others better than ourselves. Mm. If you see somebody doing well in the Lord, go over and put your hand on and bless them. Praise God. Yeah. Lord. Continue going on. Yeah. Wonderful to see the Lord using you. Mm. It's very easy for a spirit of jealousy to arise up mm. and think, oh, look what he's doing. Mm. And then everything else comes, doesn't it? It's that, that, that pride, that strife, that envy. Mm. It's very easy in the world. We don't like people doing well in life. There's always somebody who's looking for that person to fall down. Mm. The world's full of bad news. First thing we do, we put talent. Oh, look at him, he's fell off his pedestal. This has happened to him. Ha ha. No. Oh, bless them. Show them how real you are. You know, we might not like the royal family. I'm not a big fan of them, but we've got to pray for them. Yeah. We've got to pray that we'll find Christ. Yeah. We've got to pray that we'll find Jesus. Yeah. We'll come across workers who you know, might have nice cars and all this. Pray for them. Let's get that prideful spirit out of us. It says, esteem others better than yourself and he wasn't just talking about those within the body he was talking about as a whole jesus says love one another as i love you what was his great commandment love the lord thy god with all thy heart soul and mind and he says love your neighbor neighbor's not just those in church right. it's your bosses it's the it's the cleaner Who's on five pound an hour? Who work as we'll call the cleaner? Look at that scruffy so and so, five pound an hour, five pound fours. 
The factory didn't work, they didn't fall into the mess, and the whole production was stopped. So we looked at that street cleaning all over there. Yeah. Look, here's a challenge for you. When somebody asks you what you do for a living, find out the reaction. Tell them you're a bin man or you're a street cleaner, and see how long that person stays around you. Yeah. <laughs> It's one of the only questions people will ever ask you about yourself. Yeah. First question, only question, is what do you do for a living? It's the elitism spirit in the world. That's right. Hi, Dave, what do you do for a living? Yeah, Glad you've asked. I've yeah. no money, can you lend me a fiver? I'm glad you've really asked me that question. Do you know what? Do you know what, John? I'm glad you've asked me that. I'm having a right, terrible time of things. My house has been taken off me, my car has been taken off me, the dog's walked off, the wife's walked off. Everything is going absolute terrible in my life. And I've only got six weeks to live, can you help me out? You watch people's attitude. They're not wired for that. What do you do for a living? I'm a sales director. Oh, I tell you what, hang around with Dave. <laughs> <laughs> he is going places. He <laughs> this is the attitude of what the world's like. It's always asked, what do you do for a living? I'm a street cleaner. I've got nothing. Even if we've got nothing, Paul says, esteem. Esteem. Others better than yourselves. And when we have that attitude with the street cleaner, with the cleaner wiping the floors, with whoever, we are walking and operating with the mind of Christ Amen. everywhere we go. We're only here because it says, but for the grace of God, go on. There are people families who are losing their lives and children are dying of cancers and all this lot and all this lot. There are lads who are working in warehouses, struggling to make ends meet, in freezing cold warehouses or wherever. They're putting food on the table. And the BMF, one issue we had with the BMF at one point, and a brother highlighted it to me. This brother used to say to the street cleaner, he used to say to him, you are in business. Because you're putting food on your table. Yeah, you're putting food on your table, you're in business. If you're going out to work seven days a week, five days a week, you're a businessman and you're a businesswoman. Because right. you're, you're providing. Mm. It's not what you do for a living. Mm. He's died for me. Lord, help me to see others today better than myself. Help me today, Lord, to look to those people that I come across every day, the people who need you, Jesus, who need you. We have an answer. We have the living waters on the inside of us. And Paul is asking us and telling us and exhorting us to have the mind of Christ. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let us look on others and not on ourselves. Because the moment we do that, we then offer, we can easily operate with a prideful and a stout heart. At least I'm not liking the scripture in there. Remember the, the scripture about the, uh, the Pharisees? I prayed ten times a day. At least I'm not liking. You worship with your mouth. It's all about the heart, isn't it? We can't fool God, can we? With nothing. We can walk around, cry for look at me, I'm doing well. I'm a Christian, God can say. It's a God humbles those who exalt themselves. And God exalts those who humble themselves. It does say humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, isn't it? Mm. So let's keep our hand. Let each other in here today 
look on every man in his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let's look at everybody with the eyes of Jesus. Because God will bless us. God will use us. God will use us so powerfully. If people are saying there's something different about you, oh, you're not, I like being around you. Why is that? Because of Jesus. Amen. Because of what came from on the cross for me. Listen, I'm not bringing anything to the table. Only what he's done for me. Mm. I'm born again. I have a relationship with Jesus. No, 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 no. Jesus is mine. My hope. Jesus is my anchor. And I know he loves you. I've had it before where I've been in a workplace and I've prayed for a boss and I thought, Lord, I prayed for an opportunity. There was never anything. Never anything. Oh, why? And it was always different. I would never cut corners in work. You know, I would do my best for my boss. Even when I saw other people scanning time and doing this and cutting time sheets and, and, and I used to just sit at my desk in the morning and say, Dave, you're consistent. My friend Steve, who's, who's not a Christian, he says, Dave, one thing I like about you, you're consistent. Be consistent in your workplace. Be consistent wherever you go. There's somewhere out there saying, we can read our book a hundred times, and a person might not read the Bible, but they are reading us. Mm. They read us. They might not know one verse, they might not know John 3.16, they might know nothing about the Bible, but they're reading us. And the other day, can I have a chat with you? Can you pray for me? I've got something going on in my life. Can I have a conversation with you, Dave? Might be the only opportunity in six months. Might have had nothing. Be consistent. There was a tale ages ago about this work we went to work for a taxi company. A born again Christian had Jesus fish on the car, took the Bible to work, preaching. Got sat because of fraud. Let's have the mind of Christ in everything we do. Because he will exalt us in his due time. He will lift us up and exalt us and say, Remember when we went to London? Mm. We was all having a coffee in this real posh place. Mm. We didn't have enough for two coffees. <laughs> we sat there, we was just singing to the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. We was just loving Jesus. We had smiles on our faces. We were happy. There were no swerving amongst any of us. There were no anger or nothing. And this lady came over. She said, what is it about you? Mm. What have you got that? What is it you've got? Let us tell you. Now imagine that on a daily basis. Walking down the street, there's doing his heart texting. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I've not got no powder in my bucket. Hallelujah. There's three green rungs missing on my ladders. Hallelujah. There's, can you come down please into this back room and pray for me, mum or me dad? Because you haven't got long to live. Imagine if Desmond turned in all there, plaster everywhere, <laughs> swerving his head off, but he's got a Jesus fish on his van. <laughs> what testimony is that to him? We've got to do everything for him, haven't we? We've got to do everything for Jesus. We've got to do everything for him. Because one day, we want to make an account of our lives. We're going to make an account. Let's get to the meaty stuff. Don't get started. Part two. We're going. You ready? Here we go. <laughs> Let this mind be in you, which also is in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man. Who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. The Greek word for form is morph, and the Greek word refers to that outward expression which a person gives of his inmost nature. This scripture 
Paul is speaking about the divinity of Jesus Christ. The scripture backs up with this, and the word was made flesh, dwelt amongst us, and we beheld his glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Jesus, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. This scripture is pointing to Jesus Christ in full divinity. He never lost it when he went to the cross. Colossians, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? For by him, who is that about? Jesus. Were all things created that are in heaven, that are in the earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things. By him, all things consist. What a wonderful part of theology that is. What a wonderful part that is of Paul and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. He's pointing the reader to Christ. All the way through his epistles, Paul is pointing everybody to Jesus Christ. He's reminding the church of the Philippians who Jesus Christ is. He's not just a man, he's not just a prophet, he is fully man and fully God. And he never lost his divinity, he never lost who he was. Fully man and fully God. Back to Isaiah 9, 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government be upon his shoulders, his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. If anybody comes to you and they say, I don't believe that Jesus is God, it does take the scripture that will die in their sins. That's right. That's right. There is a scripture in the New Testament that says you'll die in your sins if you do not believe who I am. Jesus said, I am that I am. And what happened? The Jews, the Pharisees wanted to come and stone him. Why? Because I am that I am. Hallelujah. I and the Father are one. When you've seen me, you've seen the Father. When you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And the Christian who said, Jesus never claimed to be God. If you go through his scriptures, he is pointing to who he is. When, when Doubting Thomas went to him, Thomas says to him, I will believe who he is if I can put my finger through the hole in his hand and in his side. What did Jesus do? Thomas said, what did Jesus see the miracles? He appeared to Thomas because he was Thomas. Thomas, come here. And what did how did Thomas react? Um, One scripture to hold on to about the divinity of who Christ is, fully man and fully God, my Lord and my God. Did Jesus rebuke him? Did Jesus turn around and say, no, Jacob, no, no, no. And more to the Mormon teaching, no, he says, I am fully man and fully God. And every scripture is like a chain on a bank chain. There's not a scripture in there which will contradict. It points to the reader from Genesis, in the book of Judges, scripture in there about the man there with the sash on it is Jesus. It's all about Jesus. Jesus said, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was God, the Word is God. It's all about Jesus. And Paul is pointing the church is encouraging the church to keep fixed on Jesus. But he made himself of no reputation, took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of man.
It wasn't that Jesus was trying to achieve the quality with the Father, Jesus already had it. Jesus' divine nature was not something he had to seek for or acquire, but he already had it. Isn't that wonderful? He made himself of no reputation. Jesus, rather than coming to the earth to demand others to serve him, Jesus emptied himself and he did not stop being God. He came to say to serve rather than to be served. Jesus' deity is affirmed both before and after his incarnation. It is Jesus' humility and obedience in the face of his true identity that brings such meanings to his actions. One way Jesus did this, took on the limitations of his body, he says he made himself of no reputation, he took upon him the, the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man. Isn't that wonderful? Mm. Paul is saying here, listen, church, do you want an example of how to walk this walk? Look to your Lord and Savior. Look to the one who went to the cross. He made himself of no reputation. Let's get rid of reputation. Let's get rid of the badges saying, I am this and I am that. He made himself of no reputation. He was fully man and fully God. Mm -hmm. He entered earth as an infant. Mary was born in humble surroundings, amongst animals in a stable, sleeping in a pig trough. The list of people, the people who visited him were shepherds and not kings. He rode to Jerusalem on a donkey, not in the back of Desi's car, <laughs> or on a camel, on a donkey. There's humble, isn't it? Humble surroundings. Not in the glitz and the glamour of the five star hotel mm. with all the best bottlers. Humble. He made himself of no reputation. And when he became obedient, this was something that Jesus could only experience by coming down from the throne of the glory of heaven. And 2 Corinthians 5 22 says, For he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. He has made him to be sin, who knew no sin, that you and I could be made the righteousness of God in him. Jesus completely was Look at one of the key obedience. There was something he could only learn by the experience of the incarnation. This is why he died for us. This is why Christ came and died. Being found in fashion as men, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. When you go to Isaiah 53, we're going to close on this. We need to cut that reputation, don't we? Mm. No reputation. He despised and he was rejected of man, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows Yet we did his steaming stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. All we in here are like sheep. We've gone astray. We've come back. We have turned everyone his own way. And the Lord has laid on him 
the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before the sheep is his dumb, so he opened not his mouth. How easy is it to open our mouths? When you speak to an unsaid person and they want conflict with you, and to get into an argument with them, or, or persecution comes away and you're ready to come back at them. Jesus, he says, he opened not his mouth. We're all like sheep that have gone astray, but we've come back to the good shepherd. And Jesus gives me an example here is how to walk with the Lord, is to continue on with him. Continue looking to him, letting him change us, asking him every single day, Lord, how can I become more like you? Lord, have your way in my life. Have your way in my life. Use me for your glory with whoever I come across. Help me, Lord, to be... You know, have the mind of Christ that Paul is urging the church of Philippi to have. Is just help me to remember what Jesus did for me. That he humbled himself. He went to the cross mm. for you and for me. Mm. He became sin. The sin of us fell on him. And he paid the, the, paid the price for his blood. And who the sun sets free is free indeed. We become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Not because of our righteousness, but because the Lamb of God was slain from the foundation of the world. And it says, Behold the Lamb of God who comes to take away the sins of the world. Having the mind of Christ every day is only we can only do it in him. We can only do it through his strength, not in our own strength. Mm. Paul said, when I'm weak, I'm strong. When we come to the cross and say, Jesus, help me today. Mm. Help me, Lord, walk this walk with you. Help me to have the mind of Christ every single day. To so look at these scriptures and say, he made himself of no reputation. This was fully man, fully God. What's Emmanuel? God with us. When you see me, you've seen the fact. When you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And he took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of you and I. How can I serve you today, Lord? How can I, how can I, how can I just be a follower of Christ for you just Seek me, get in your word, ask me, and I will open doors for you, and I'll show you great and mighty things. Mm. I might take you to Wigan to go and sit on the, the bus stop with a man who's been on that bus stop for ages, mm. in the cold and wet. He might be the only person he spoke to all week. Good news from afar. It's like water to a, a dry well, just Good news, just go and give somebody good news. Just follow him. Danny went yesterday. Mm. What a blessing. Come together as a body, a man on his way to commit suicide. Mm. And we were faithful and obedient. No, Lord, we're going to Wigan. I'm not going to Blackpool. We're going, we're going to go where we want to go. No, just go where I want. I've got somebody waiting for you. There's somebody who needs to hear about you, about me, and he'll do it. He was obedient, and when we're obedient, he'll bless us so much. And that lad has been blessed and touched because he was obedient to his voice. We became of no reputation. We're going to do it our way because we are going all over. We go where we want. No, you're going where I'm taking take you. Yeah. We only got to Angie because the Lord's directing us there. You only got to win because the Lord's directing you. You'll be in jobs, and the Lord will tell you to leave a job. And if the Lord tells you to leave it, just say, Lord, the money's great. You'll say, listen, just be obedient. I'll take you and I'll put you somewhere else. Don't ever be, you know, it's very easy to keep hold of something. But when the Lord tells us to let go of it, he's doing it for a reason. 
He'll do it for a reason. There's so many who like the position, the nice car and the good job. It's an idol, isn't it? It becomes an idol to us. Yeah. I've got this. I was the same with the under four eating. Two years ago, setting up, I was doing really well. I can't, you know, got back in the presence of God, seeking it. And I'll be, guess what? Sales dry up. And you're like, Lord, I want to trust you. Then when you say, Lord, I'll give it all to you. Take it off me, Lord. If it's putting, if it's putting an idol between me and you, and what will the Lord do? If we're humble, we're faithful, Lord bless us. Because anything that we put before him is an idol. Football, my singing, darts, yeah. <laughs> anything, anything we have that we put before God is an idol. And he'll take it. Why? Because he wants us to follow him and worship him and be of no reputation like him and just say, Jesus, I want to follow you wherever. And that's the message today. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Wow. What a powerful word. Very selfish Christians in here. <laughs> or is very generous Christians? <laughs> because that message was just not for us in here. That message was for people out there as well. So, if you have the power to share this message, if you, has anyone got friends and family that are unsaved? Hello? <laughs> Share this message with as many people as you can. You may take your all till midnight tonight. <laughs> Share this message with as many people as you can. Because that was the word of God tonight. Amen. And God wants people to hear that and to be blessed. And as we've been blessed tonight with the word, God is saying, I want more to like her to receive that as well. Mm -hmm. And we can do that. Yeah, we can be part of God reaching people out there. So when you get home tonight, get sure in. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we're going to have a worship song again and then the tea and coffee. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> He's bringing job up again. Like he's standing. Something I'm having him with his job. Not letting him go, is it? You're all right, you're going to be preaching, aren't you? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's worship God. Yeah, if you he likes his job. He likes his job. I forgot to switch the microphone on the camera. I forgot to switch the microphone on the camera. I forgot to switch it on.
Well, we're going to have to put a register in place. So you're already on your second strike. <laughs> Yes, I have a question. Consider this. If you're hanging off the action, you this, I put this up on Facebook. Yes. Lots of people haven't answered it, and that tells me something. If you find yourself. Oh, I didn't know it was a question, I just liked it. Is, is it supposed to read the writing? <laughs> oh! <laughs> Absolutely. If you're hanging off the edge of the cliff by your fingertips, yeah. when would you want God to save you? Straight away. When you fall. Next. You got it. Oh, when you fall. Well, I'd say no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you're hanging on, you're hanging on. Oh, it's yeah. It's by your own strength. That's it's right. only when we submit and give up and let go. There you go. That God is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not in the NIV. The NIV. The NIV. I gave you that question about five years ago. And I, I paid to have that, that picture drawn. I paid for that commission. That. Wow. And, and because I got the answer, I'd like to get a copy of it for <laughs> You get three albums. <laughs> yeah. You get the <laughs> I don't want the, the you get a book, eh? Blessing service is our own. The Church of England's got nothing on us. <laughs> bring your animals, bring the cattle on a thousand hills. <laughs> <laughs> bring the sheep in. Bring your men. <laughs> we were with the farmers yesterday. Hey. We should have asked them to bring the animals in. <laughs> and do you know what I said to him? I said, Jesus, Thank you. spoke directly to you, lot. <laughs> Wheat and the tears. <laughs> the farmers, did it. When you put your hand to the plough, you don't look back. Come straight on. Anyway, Lord Jesus, we come before you. Father, we, we thank you, Lord, for tonight. We thank you for every day, Lord that we have with you, Lord. We thank you for salvation. We thank you for the blood of Jesus which was shed for us. We thank you, Lord, that greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. Amen. Thank you that we have the blood of Jesus which has covered us, which has washed our sins away. Thank you that there is power in the blood of Jesus. Yes. We thank you, Lord Jesus, it's by grace are we saved through faith. It's a gift of God. It's not anything we can do lest we should boast. We thank you, Lord, that we're saved by grace and faith in Christ. And Lord, we just pray tonight that we're blessing to you and one of us tonight as we go our way. Holy Spirit, we just pray that you'll just speak to our hearts individually on our beds in our own time. Use us for your glory. Lord, we pray that we can be more like Christ every day. Help us to have the mind of Jesus every day, Lord, and to be used for you. That this next week we can come here, Lord. And give testimony and share what you've done. I come before you, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Amen.